So in this chapter, we've been talking a lot about strong acids and bases and weak acids and weak bases. But what makes something a strong acid or a stronger acid than uh, than something else? So there's some some trends that, that we can look at and we can kind of compare if we're just given a bunch of acids. We can kind of compare them without their KAs. Um, we'll be able to tell which ones are strong or stronger. What are some factors that affect the acid strength? So there's two types of acids we're going to consider, binary acids and oxy acids. So binary acids are acids that have a hydrogen. They all have hydrogen, right? That's what makes an acid an acid. It's going to have an H on it. Their acids are proton donors. So we have an H and then something else for binary acids. So something like HCl would be a binary acid. Uh, HF, HBr, all of these are different types of binary acids. An oxy acid is going to have something that has oxygen attached to it as well. So you're going to have hydrogen and then oxygen, or hydrogen and a bunch of oxygens. So really the, the fundamental difference here is hydrogen is attached to another atom uh, in a binary acid, and then an oxy acid, the hydrogen is directly attached to an oxygen, and then oxygen is attached to something else, is, is bonded to something else. Um, so there's going to be different trends when you're like trying to compare, you know, to, to binary acids, which one's the stronger acid versus oxy acids. Um, so we're going to compare binary to binary and oxy to oxy. Um, so oxy acids, or first we'll look at binary acids. So binary acids, you're really trying to ask this question, how easy is it to break this HX bond? So X is just, you know, the other part of the, uh, the binary acid. So how easy is it to break, let's write that down, how easy is it to break, I don't know why there's this delay, <laughs> to break um, the HX bond. Right, that's what we want to find out. How easy is it to break the HX bond? And whatever makes it easier to break that bond, then it makes it a stronger acid. So the easier it is to break that bond, the stronger the acid is, uh, because it gives up the H plus in that bond. So two trends we'll look at. The first one is really kind of easy to see. If you have, as you go down a group, if you remember some of the periodic trends we learned in chapter seven, um, H, F, these are, these are both pretty small, and then CL is bigger and BR is bigger. So as you go down the group, you get bigger and bigger. So you have something that looks like um, H with, a, there's your F, and then this is CL, and then BR is even bigger on, on the page. Um, but the idea is that the what happens to the HX bond? Here it's really small, here it gets a lot longer, and then here it's really, really, really long. So it's going to be easy to break this, much easier to break this bond because the hydrogen is so far away from um, the nucleus here. So this bond is really, really big. The longer the bond, the weaker it is, and so the easier it is to break. So because it's so easy to break this bond, this hydrogen is going to uh, be donated much easier than something like an HF. So in HF, this is a weak acid, but HBr is a strong acid, and this has everything to do with how long and how weak the HX bond is. So that's one way to compare things in the same in the same family. As you go down the group, the the, the atom gets bigger, so the bond is going to get longer and weaker and easier to break. Um, another way to compare these is by looking at how polar the bond is. So HF is more polar than the OH bond here, which is more polar than the NH bond here, which is more polar here. So as you increase in electronegativity, and you go in this direction, you're increasing in electronegativity, remember fluorine is the most electronegative atom, the more electronegative the atom is when it's in a bond with hydrogen, the greater uh, the difference in electronegativity is going to be, uh, which means it's a more polar bond. The more polar the bond, um, the, basically what does that mean? If you have a really polar bond, you have hydrogen here, you have F here, F is going to be really partially negative. This one's going to be really partially positive. The more polar this bond is, the bigger these values are, the more negative it is, the more positive on this side. Um, so if this is really, really, I'm sorry, if this is really, really positive, then when water comes along, um, it's going to be more attracted to this really positive hydrogen. It's going to steal it, and then it's going to break that bond. So when you're comparing like HF versus um, you know NH3 and OH, HF is going to be a weak, is going to be an acid. Water is um, amphiprotic; it can act as an acid or base. And NH3 is a base, and then this guy is nothing. So as you increase, as you go over here, it's it's getting easier and easier to remove that H bond, the H whatever bonds, remove that hydrogen because of electronegativity. So if you're comparing these two trends with binary acids, if you're in the same 
um, row, if you're in the same period, you're going to compare electronegativity as you go from left to right. It becomes more polar as you go as you move in that direction, so it's going to be easier to break that bond. As you go down a group, it has everything to do with size. Now for oxy acids, uh, the trend is a little bit different. So there's, there's two things that we'll look at with oxy acids. Again, the hydrogen is directly attached to the oxygen, which is attached to something else. So we'll call that other atom Y. Um, and so what happens here? It doesn't have anything to do with kind of the, the, um, the size issue now. Uh, but now you're looking at the number of oxygens that you have, as well as the, uh, the central atom. How, how electronegative is that central atom? So the more electronegative the central atom is, so if we're comparing something like um, HOCl versus HOBr, um, who's more electronegative? The, the chlorine is more electronegative than the fluorine because than the bromine because it's closer to fluorine. So if this is more electronegative, it's going to draw the electron density out of this bond and weaken this bond. So the more electronegative this central atom is, the longer this bond gets, the weaker it is, and the, the weaker the longer this bond, the easier it is to uh, to donate to you know, water if you're in an aqueous solution, and it becomes more acidic. So this guy would be more acidic than this one. All you're doing is comparing the electronegative negativity of the central atoms. Now, if the, whoever has more oxygens, oxygen is also electron withdrawing, so the more oxygens you have, the more it's going to pull the electron density out of this bond. So here, if we compare HOCl versus this guy, HClO2, um, the more oxygens you have, the more it's pulling the electrons out of this bond, right? So it's pulling them out of this bond, making it longer and weaker. So then by the time you get over here to, you know, we've looked at this one before, Chloric acid, HClO4, it has so many oxygens that it's all, they're all pulling the electrons out of this bond, making it really weak and easy to break. And so the more oxygens you have, the more oxygens, then the stronger the acid for oxy acids. Um, so that's one way to compare them. And then the other way is the more electronegative the central atom, the stronger the acid. Negative, the central atom, stronger the acid. I don't know why this is so delayed. All right, so we can do a few examples down here. So arrange these in order of um, increasing acid strength. So what you want to do is look these up in the, in the periodic table, kind of put them in order or that you find them in the periodic table. Um, K is going to be all the way over here. That's going to be the weakest one, and then they're going to increase in acid strength as you go across. These are all in the same um, period. HBr. So HBr, that's going. You know that that's a strong acid. That's on our strong acid acid list. So that's got to be the strongest one. Now down here, when you're comparing oxy acids, what are we looking at? Um, first, we, we can compare these two. They have the same central atom, so we're going to look at the number of oxygens. So this one is stronger than this one. And then to compare these two, we're going to compare the central atoms because they have the same number of oxygens. So if you have the same number of oxygens, compare the central atom. If you have the same central atom, compare the number of oxygens. Whoever has more oxygens, in this case, so this guy has more oxygens, so he's going to be the stronger, stronger acid than this one. And now to compare these two, um, we're looking at the electronegativity, so uh, sulfuric acid. Is a stronger acid than this one because sulfur has a is, is more electronegative than selenium. So this is the weakest one. You can put these in order, and then four, and then finally H2SO4. The very last thing that we'll look at are Lewis acids and bases, and this is going to be important uh, when you get to our